The cell is the smallest unit of life. It's the basic building block of life and it can be considered the basic structural, functional and biological unit of life. It's within the cell that all life processes occur. Now those life processes we can summarise as Mrs. Gren. So the M is for movement. Cells are capable of movement. R is for respiration or specifically cellular respiration. So it's the process of converting glucose to energy. S is for sensitivity. We're talking about sensitivity to stimuli, so detecting stimuli and responding to stimuli. G is for growth. Cells are capable of growing. R is for reproduction. E is for excretion, the removal of waste. And N is for nutrients, so the ability to be able to take nutrients into the cell for the life processes. So that's cells are the smallest unit of life and they're capable of all of these life processes that we can summarise as Mrs. Gren. Now what we're going to do is have a look at the different type cells. Cells can be divided into two key types, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Now if you have a look at these two diagrams, you can see that the prokaryotic cell is, is much simpler. It doesn't contain a nucleus, it doesn't contain any membrane-bound organelles, and whilst you can't really see it in this photo, it's much, much smaller. The eukaryotic cell is far more complex. It contains a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. So let's go through and, and have a look at the differences between the two. So the prokaryotic cells are much simpler, much smaller. Prokaryotic cells were the first cells. They do not contain a nucleus. So in fact, you can see here in the diagram that whilst there's no nucleus, there is nuclear material, DNA, and it's a single circular chromosome. So it does have DNA, but it's... Um, um, a single circular chromosome. And also, there's no membrane-bound organelles. So there's no nucleus, and there's no membrane-bound organelles. Now, you know prokaryotes as bacteria. They are the first cells. They are the most abundant cells in the whole world. So abundant, in other words, is the, the most of them. They're everywhere. The other thing that we know about the prokaryotes is that they always exist as single-celled organisms. Always single-celled organisms. So now let's have a look at the eukaryotic cell. You can see that here by the diagram that it's much bigger and it contains membrane-bound organelles, and it's far more complex. So um, the eukaryotic cell contains a nucleus, and within that nucleus, there's um, that contains the DNA and chromosomes, and it also has membrane-bound organelles. So the organelles all have specialised functions, membrane-bound organelles. And they're contained within membranes to control the reactions that occur within them. They're much larger, much more complex, and they can either be single-celled, single-celled, or multicellular organisms. So they could either be single-celled or multicellular. Now let's have a look at the organelles within the pro the <laughs> the organelles within the eukaryotic cell. Now, here in this diagram here, you can see that this is actually an animal cell. Now, animals and plant cells have many of the same organelles, 
but there is some differences as well. So I'll cover the, um, the structure and function of the key organelles that are in both, and then we'll have a look at the plant cell and see how it's different. So, first of all, we have, and what I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna actually draw a diagram of a cell so you get an idea of how we can um, draw a stylized version of a cell. So the first one is the nucleus. And the nucleus it contains um, a part inside it. You can see that I've colored in black here, which is called the nucleolus. So the nucleus, its function to, uh, it's kind of like the, the, the brain of the cell, if you like. It contains the DNA and it controls the cell. Now the nucleolus, which is with inside the cell, uh, which is inside the nucleus, that actually produces the ribosomes. So we're gonna have a look at ribosomes in a minute. Now the next one we're gonna draw is the mitochondria. I'll do that one red. Mitochondria looks like a sausage and it has a highly folded membrane. It's got an internal membrane that's highly folded like this and it's to increase surface area and it's across that membrane that cellular respiration occurs. Now, a single mitochondria is called a mitochondrion. Mitochondrion. And the mitochondrion, its job is the site of cellular respiration. Right, next one I'm going to draw. So I've mentioned the ribosomes. Well, I'll show you where the ribosomes are. So we have another highly folded membrane here called the endoplasmic reticulum. And this particular endoplasmic reticulum is called rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has these studded, studded with these little dots here called the ribosomes. So we've got the rough and it's called endoplasmic reticulum. We often just call it ER, endoplasmic reticulum. And the job of the rough ER is it's involved in protein synthesis. Synthesis means the making, it's the making of protein because of its very important role with the ribosomes. The ribosomes are the protein making factories. Ribosomes are involved in protein synthesis. And there, the ribosomes exist on the endoplasmic reticulum. There's another type of endoplasmic reticulum, but this one doesn't have the ribosomes attached to it. So this time, it's not called rough endoplasmic reticulum, it's called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now we can just call it ER. Smooth ER. It's smooth because it doesn't have ribosomes. It's not involved in protein synthesis. It is in fact involved in lipid and hormone synthesis. So it makes lipids and hormones. There's also a third highly folded um, organelle called the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw one of those. I might draw it up here. So again, it's highly folded. Now this one here is like the post office. What it does is it packages up things that can be transported uh, in these little vesicles and um, that, that, that come out of the membrane of the, the, of the Golgi apparatus and they can then exit the cell. So the Golgi, oh, I'll just label it. It's called the Golgi. It's either called the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. And its job is transport and export. 
Yeah. So it forms its membrane into little vesicles that then move around and then can be exported through exocytosis. Now, there's of course another really important one, um, and that is all around the cell. Um, and so basically it's, it's the, the, um, the gel-like liquid that all of these organelles sit within, and that's called the cytoplasm. Something else, of course, is the cell membrane, the plasma membrane, which controls movement in and out of the cell, controls what goes in and out of the cell, entry and exit from the cell. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, in terms of plants, Plants have most of these, if not all of these as well. So plants do have mitochondria. They have the nucleus, the nucleolus, the rough and smooth ER, the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, Golgi apparatus. It contains all of these, but also has a few other things as well. Let's have a look. So here's a plant cell here, stylized plant cell. Some of the things I'll point out, so the nucleus, nucleolus, Cell membrane, the cytoplasm is all, you see, all the way through here. Um, so this will be the, I think this looks like the rough ER. This looks like the Golgi apparatus, the mitochondria, the smooth ER around here as well. So what's different? Well, there's two, um, two things, that, or three things probably that are really quite different. So... I'm going to go ahead and draw these green. The first one is the plant cells have a cell wall that surrounds the cell membrane. So this is the cell membrane here. There's a cell wall around that. And that gives um, the, the plant cell a lot more rigidity. Now, another thing that you can see here is this large water-filled thing here, and that's called a vacuole. So I really should color that blue as well. So a vacuole is, contains water, and the vacuole is important for a plant to be able to regulate the pressure within the cell. Because what a cell does, is uh, a plant cell does is it there's lots of water in it and actually pushes out against the cell wall so the water pushes out against the cell wall to make the cell rigid so that's the vacuole um, this is the cell membrane and the green thing here is the cell wall this is the cell wall now yeah. something else that we see is this organelle here, this green organelle, and that is called the chloroplast. And the chloroplast, if you look really carefully there, the chloroplast contains a whole heap of stacks. So I'll just draw a chloroplast here, and it's got these stacks, these membrane bound stacks within it, and it's in there that it actually captures sunlight for photosynthesis. So this is called the chloroplast. Okay, so here's, these are the organelles that are different in a plant, this is the plant cell, different to a plant cell than an animal cell. So chloroplast, the vacuole, is involved in water storage. And then, of course, we've got the cell wall as well. And, okay, so that's pretty well it.